Today, we've got a new project truck in the shop. It's a 2007 Wrangler that we saved a ton of money on by buying the two-wheel drive version. So we're gonna start the process of converting it to four-wheel drive. Right. All you've gotta do is remove this rear portion of the transmission or the two-wheel drive extension housing and then swap it for a four-wheel drive extension housing. It's all today here on Truck Tech. Hey guys, welcome to Truck Tech. Now, not too long ago, I was looking online at used vehicles and searched for the next Truck Tech project and came across this Jeep Wrangler that was substantially cheaper than Jeep Wranglers like this typically go for. And I instantly thought one of two things. One, it's a really good deal, or two, and more likely, there's something seriously wrong with it. It's got rust, serious accident, a rebuilt title, flood damage, something to take away from its real value. Well, the picture was a little bit more clear and filled in when I read the description and it kept being referred to as a great car. Same thing when I called the owner. Oh, you're going to love this car. That's because this poor Jeep is a two wheel drive. And after that revelation, my reaction was, what's the point of a two wheel drive Jeep Wrangler and who would want one? Then I realized the money we would save on the purchase price would more than cover the cost of converting this thing to four wheel drive. The only problem with that is we'd end up with a stock four-wheel drive Jeep Wrangler that we saved a few bucks on. Nothing wrong with that if that's what you want. We just think it would make more sense and be even better to take the money saved and invest it in good aftermarket parts better suited to the vehicle's intended use. Now the topic comes up pretty often about converting two-wheel drive trucks and SUVs into four-wheel drives. And usually it makes more financial sense to sell the vehicle you've got and to buy a four-wheel drive version. But in the case of these Jeep Wranglers, the conversion really isn't that involved, and it's something you could do at home in the driveway. And with the Jeep up in the air, we can make quick work of teardown, starting by removing the longest version of a Jeep Wrangler drive shaft ever made. We follow that with loosening of the factory gas tank skid plate, so we can remove the factory transmission cross member. Now, typically when doing a two to four wheel drive conversion, you're looking at buying an entire transmission so you've got a spot to hang a transfer case. But on this specific Jeep model transmission, it's a lot simpler. All you've got to do is remove this rear portion of the transmission or the two wheel drive extension housing and then swap it for a four wheel drive extension housing. Then you've got a place to hang a transfer case and you're well on your way to a four wheel drive swap. And that's a great option, but we've got an even better one. And that is to install this gear reduction box that we picked up from advanced adapters called the Ruba Crawler. Now this will serve as our four wheel drive adapter or extension housing and as a supplemental low range of 272 to one. And with our twin stick shifters, we'll have high and low range and two wheel drive that can be combined with all the factory transfer case gearing options, giving us a double low range of 7.4 to one. That is crawling. We also picked up a couple of their heavy duty shift cables so we don't have to worry about factory cables breaking on us at an inopportune moment. Now this is a factory four wheel drive extension housing and there's nothing in here except for an output shaft. So it's just really smart to take advantage of this dead space like they did with the Ruba crawler and add a second planetary gear set. The first thing I did was remove the drive shaft yoke because I assumed it had to come off in order to remove the extension housing. There we go. Yummy. Oh, I didn't even need to take that yoke off. Look at that. Output shaft is coming with it. Then we can scrape off any old sealant and lay down a new bead using the RTV supplied in the kit. And after test fitting the Ruber crawler and making sure it fits, don't forget the O-ring that seals to the oil passage on the back of the transmission. It's what provides all the lubrication for the Ruber crawler. There she is. Then we can bolt it down using the hardware provided. And after snugging them all down, we're gonna torque each bolt to 40 foot pounds. After that, we can add the supplied mounting bracket. Now we've got the seats and carpet pulled out just to make this a little bit easier and easier to show you. And after removing the console, 
we can feed the shifter cables up through the factory cutout in the floor for the transfer case shifter. Back underneath, we attach the supplied brackets to the side of the Ruber crawler. One for our underdrive and one for the transfer case. Now to make our Jeep four wheel drive, we're using a stock transfer case out of a JK Wrangler, the NP241. Now it's got 272 to one low range. We could have used the Rubicon edition of this transfer case with its four to one low range, but with our underdrive box, well, there's really no need for any additional low range gearing. Now these things are plentiful and therefore pretty cheap. This one came from Powertrain Products and it's been fully rebuilt, so we know it's ready for installation. Going to go for that hole, that's the stock indexing. Use my head here. There we go. All right. Alright, now this is the transmission mounting plate from the two-wheel drive transmission and it goes obviously in between the transmission and these rubber isolators here on the cross member and it's got a three-bolt pattern, but our four-wheel drive transmission takes a four-bolt mount. But rather than try to track down this dealer-only item that we may or may not even be able to get our hands on, I'm just going to modify this one to work, but I'll take care of it later. For now, I want to finish up the installation of the shifters. After the break, we'll get the rear long arms installed. And later, we'll get the front control arms mounted. Stay tuned. Grease Zerk is pointing down once it's installed. Hey guys, welcome back to Truck Tech, where we're in the middle of converting our Jeep Wrangler from two-wheel drive to the proper four-wheel drive. And we're installing our twin stick shifter plate on top of the transmission tunnel and using the studs that are there, whether it's two wheel drive or four wheel drive from the factory. Now there's a handful of small parts and small hardware used to install the shifter cables. So to prevent everything from loosening up while bouncing down the trail, a little bit of thread locker goes a long way. Then remove the shift handles so you can slide the console over top. But since we started with a two wheel drive, we're gonna have to make a modification to the console trim by converting this coin slot or whatever that is into a hole for the transfer case shifters to stick through. I'm using a razor knife and I'm trying to be really careful. Once I've got the hole cut open, I'm filing things down to make it look a little bit neater. Then it simply snaps back in place and you can reattach the transmission shifter. And finally, reattach your twin stick shifters for the last time. Low range, high range, two wheel drive all the way forward. Turned out pretty good. Now we plan on using our newly converted four wheel drive Wrangler on some pretty hardcore trails. So we wanted to go with a suspension kit that was up to the task. We ended up going with this BDS four and a half inch long arm kit, meaning these long arms will replace the much shorter factory control arms. Now the kit is comprehensive and includes most of the things you see on the table. A few items were optional. We've got coil springs and shocks for all four corners, heavy duty upper and lower control arms for the front and back, sway bar end links, all the bracketry and hardware necessary for the installation, along with a drop pitman arm and extended brake lines. We've got the optional adjustable front and rear track bars and the optional JKS ultimate sway bar disconnects. Now the control arms themselves feature flex joints at one end and a rubber bushing at the other to try to limit noise and vibration. Now one of the upgrades we wanted to go with the most were these Fox shocks. They're made specifically for BDS, it's their 2.0 performance series. And they're custom tuned and valved specifically for this lift kit and our Wrangler. So they should perform and handle really, really well. The first thing we did was swap in our extended brake lines then remove the shocks and the coil springs, and then reinstall the shocks so the axle has something to rest on and be stabilized by. Then you can get to work cutting off the original lower control arm mounts. Now there's more than one way to do this, it's just the way I like to do it. Basically trying to fatigue the weld on the outer edge of the frame. Once that happens, it'll break clean, leaving very little to be ground down flush.
And after grinding down some sharp edges, we can remove the upper control arms and use a sawzall to cut a portion of it. Then we're using the same old fatigue the weld method to try to break the rest free. Then I'm making a little bit of clearance room for the new lower and longer control arms. This is on the rear portion of the rear body mount. Then remove the factory body mount bolt. It's not gonna get reused. Then we can temporarily install the new control arm brackets so we can mark and drill the holes in the frame. And once all the holes are drilled, it's time to add a few nut certs, which are provided in the kit. Basically turns a rivet into a threaded insert that goes inside of the frame. Mated. Now I've got to feed this half inch bolt tab down through the frame and out of the hole I drilled to help secure the control arm bracket. And to assist that in happening, BDS includes this fish wire that threads onto the end of the bolt. You can pull it down through the frame. Look at that. You just unthread it. Voila. Then we can reinstall the control arm bracket, attach all the hardware, and torque everything to spec, which in this case is 65 foot-pounds. And if you don't have a torque wrench, just be careful not to over-tighten them. Now the original body mount bolt we removed obviously isn't gonna work. So we're gonna be installing the supplied new bolt and washer. Done. Then you can install the new lower and upper control arms. Up next, we'll complete the rear suspension and do away with the old two-wheel drive front beam axle. Stick around. Up, up, and away. Hey guys, welcome back to Truck Tech, where we're in the middle of installing a new long arm suspension on our newly converted four-wheel drive JK Wrangler. To finish up the rear lift, we're installing the supplied track bar relocation bracket on the axle end using the factory track bar mounting hole and a hole we drilled in the top of the mount. Then we can add the adjustable track bar. That's gonna take a little massage in. <clears throat> then we can add the new longer rear coil springs. Then wrestle them into position. We follow that with the installation of our upgraded Fox shocks and new longer sway bar end links. And with the rear half finished up, we can move on to the front, starting with getting rid of this sad two-wheel drive beam axle. Now we are gonna reuse portions of this axle so we're not throwing the whole thing away. Up, up, and away. We do need to reuse the stock knuckles and brakes. Then we can get to work cutting off the lower control arm mounts, or at least the inner portion. And using a supplied template, trim the upper control arm mount as well, along with drilling a hole. This will provide clearance and an additional mounting hole for the new upper control arm mounting bracket. All this shiny steel will turn to rust real quick if you don't protect it. So we're hitting it with a couple of coats of black spray paint. Then we can bolt on the new lower control arm mount, which attaches to the frame and the cross member. After that, we can install the upper control arm relocation bracket, which attaches to the factory control arm mount using the provided hardware. Then we can add our four new control arms. Just make sure the grease zerk is pointing down once it's installed. Lower arm. 
the other side, and all we got left to do is shocks. And when tightening down these shock studs, you don't want to over compress the bushing. Tighten it down to that bushing just starts to expand to the edge of that cupped washer. That's tight enough. You don't want to smash it into a pancake. That looks good, starting to balloon up a little bit. All this and prep for beadlock rims and big 37 inch tires. Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Well, we've got our 07 Jeep Wrangler well on its way to being the four wheel drive JK it always should have been. So far, we've added an underdrive crawl box, a factory NP241 transfer case, and a four and a half inch long arm lift kit. And to finish this thing up, we can just go to the junkyard, pick up a factory Dana 30 front axle, order up a couple of drive shafts, and we'd be done. But like we told you right up front, we want to order and invest in parts that are more in line with the intended use of the vehicle, which is tackling some pretty hardcore trails. So we're going to be ordering a Dana 44 heavy duty front axle housing. I don't think the stockers up to the tires and wheels we have in mind. Speaking of which, let's go check them out. The tires are 37 by 1250 Nitto Trail Grappler mud terrains, and they ought to be the perfect match for the trails we plan on running. It's an aggressive tire without being too aggressive. We plan on wheeling this Jeep a lot, but truth be told, most of its time will be spent on the street. So a dual purpose tire with good road manners is the perfect choice. Now, when it comes to wheels, we knew we wanted an aluminum wheel and a beadlock. So we went to the RIMS-1 website, took a look at their selection, and settled on these KMC XD Enduro True Beadlocks. It's a 17 by 8.5 inch wheel with zero offset. And I know you guys have heard the term beadlock before, but may not be familiar with the process. It essentially takes the outer bead of the tire and locks it in place in between this flange and this flange, clamping everything in place and preventing the tire from slipping off the bead at lower air pressure. And another benefit, you get to mount your own tires and wheels at home. Now, if you use your truck for towing or you've upgraded to larger and heavier aftermarket tires and wheels, you might want to check out one of these PowerStop Z36 Extreme Brake Kits. This kit includes rotors that have been drilled and slotted for cooler operation and zinc plated for corrosion resistance. The brake pads have a powder coated backing plate and a noise reducing stainless steel shim. The pad compound is carbon fiber and ceramic and has a higher coefficient of friction than the stock pads. The kit also includes high temp brake lube, premium stainless steel hardware, and a pin bushing kit. So if your truck works hard, make sure your brakes are up to the task with a power stop brake kit. Now every pickup needs a toolbox, and if yours doesn't have one yet, you need to check out this DZ professional grade blue label padlock box. This is a powder coated aluminum tread plate box, and it's got a single latch release mechanism conveniently located on the driver's side. It has a bolt brand lock that uses your existing truck key and the locking mechanism is hidden on the inside for security. It's got a steel storage tray, an electrical access port, and a rubber seal on the lid to keep the elements out. So if you need lockable and secure storage for your pickup, check out the DZ padlock box. Guys, thanks for watching Truck Tech. See you next time.